Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use PowerPoint presentations to make your class in lessons a little bit more interactive, which makes the lessons a little bit more fun for the student. So I'm going to pull up a couple things that I used with my student today. So I put this phonics lesson together for my student. And I'll show you some ways that I made it interactive for them. So here is Winnie, and here is our phonics lesson. So let me make it large for you. So the first thing I do that isn't really interactive for the student, but it still makes it a little more exciting, a little more fun, is having the slides be interactive by having the animations fading in, flying in, fading out, things like that. So anytime I'm doing blending or words, I like to use those interactive features. So when I click on the arrow, my L flies in, sort of practicing the L blends. Here's my C, my L flies in, and my FL. I do the same thing with my words. Now we're blending the BL sound with the end of the word, and we practice those words together. So again, the student is not doing anything here, but it still makes the lesson a little bit more fun for them having those interactive features. So now I'm going to show you some ways to make it interactive for the student. So let me, oops, go skip to my slides. Also using video animations. My students love these. They're always more fun than just still pictures. So that's another way to make it a little bit more fun and a little bit more interactive. So I have my clap and my fly. All right, so this is a just a practice that I did with my student today that the student was able to actually click on the lesson themselves. So my student, even though she's using an iPad, your students can click on PowerPoint presentations, even using an iPad or using the computer. You just have to make sure to tell them they need to click on the little clicker at the top or at the bottom, depending on what device that they're using. If they're using the pen, they're not going to be able to click. So I always remind her, and if she doesn't remember, I always try my best. <laughs> I draw my little clicker so the student knows to click on that. The other option, if you are in um, the class in Facebook group, uh, let's see, let me find it. We have this that you can use to help the students see which one they need to use. So I can say, number one, they know to go to the clicker. So those are a couple ways that you can help the student know which tool they need to use to interact with the lesson. So once they are on the clicker, now my student can click on the PowerPoint. It's important they click on the correct spot. If they just click up top, it's just going to go to the next slide. So what I did with my student today is first I had her read the word that we were practicing, blue, and then I told her to click on the picture of blue. So she went over, she clicked on this one, she got a happy face, but there are two blues. She quickly realized, oh, I need to click on this one too. And she got a happy face. And in the middle, if she accidentally clicked on it, which she wanted to just because she wanted to see what was behind it, it would be the sad face. So this way she was able to interact with the slides. Then we went to the next one. She said the word cloud, and this one only had one answer, so she clicked on the cloud. And then if, if your student really wants to click on the other ones, make sure you find a way for them to say cloud, yes, and then they might be able to say like, no, no. That way you understand that they know what the correct answer is and they're not accidentally clicking on the wrong answer or if they don't know the correct answer. So again, flower, yes, yes. No, good way for them to have fun clicking on all of the answers and not just one. You could also um, extend with those. Oh, here's blow. My student actually had a hard time with this one because she didn't realize, oh, all of them are blowing something. They're just a little bit different. So I just circled, changed to my um, pen, and then she realized, oh yeah, they are all blow. So we clicked on all of those. So here, if you're doing class, she was able to click on both of the class. Instead of saying no, you could say, what is this? If they already know this word, or you know they've learned this word, they could say, oh, this is a playground, not a class. 
So fun way for the student to interact with the lesson. So they're not just watching and speaking and listening. They're able to actually click on them, which they wouldn't be able to do um, if you were doing other types of lessons. So now I'm going to show you another interactive activity that I do. This one I did not create myself. I found it. So let me pull it up. Oh, it's under Winnie. And it's the matching game. So you can see where I got this game, www.gamesforesl.com. There were tons of games on there, but so far this one is my favorite. And it's actually very easy to create. It gives you the, the directions right here. So when you open it, you're going to see just this when you get the template for the PowerPoint. Then you just create picture or find pictures online, put it over the number, right click, send it back. Super easy. So for this one, again, the student can interact. They just need to make sure they're on the mouse um, button to click. So for this one, since we were learning about the phonics words and their meanings, this one she had to match the picture to the word. So I tell my student, pick two numbers. Again, they can click themselves. So let's say we click three and five. You can either have them say the words as they go or just tell you yes or no and then say the words if it's correct. You can play it any way that you want. Once we realize, oh, nope, that's not a match. I usually click the red to close it, but if you have a more advanced student, they can just do it themselves. My student's a little bit younger, so I just did it for her. And then keep going, oh, blue, flag, nope, close those out, oops. There we go. Oh, cloud. So once they find the word, match to the picture, they could say the word and you can keep that one open and they just keep going, trying to match the two words together. My student loves playing this game. So it's one of her favorites. And it's also, like I said, very easy to make. The only recommendation I have for this game is to either put at the end of a PowerPoint slide presentation, whatever lesson, or just put it in there by itself, a separate PowerPoint. The reason I say that is when I first tested it out, I had another slide right after it. And if the student's clicking too fast, let's say they click two numbers very fast, it'll jump to the next slide. That was a problem that I had. But if there's nothing after it, you don't have to worry about it jumping to any slides. So if you are interested in these games, I definitely recommend going to the website for this one. I'll pull that up again so you can see gamesforesl.com. The one that I made for my other lesson that I showed you where they clicked on the picture, that one I made myself. If you would like me to make a video on how I made that, it's not really the fastest <laughs> thing to make, but once you get the hang of it, you can get through it pretty quickly. So hopefully these are some fun games that you can play with your students. Have a good day.